Sorry about that. But that's okay because, um, I don't even know what I was saying now. Um, the nail gun is still missing. And, let me just tell you how the day started off. I get up. Um, I get down to the shop, or I call first, and see if my mom and stepdad had left, and they hadn't, so I got on the phone and called Mr. Wallace, oh, Mr. Byers, who did the AC install, and he didn't actually pick up the nail gun, he said his son didn't pick it up. So that leaves just a, uh, just a few people that could have done it. And when I get down there, I go to looking for my some of my tools, like the rake and the pruning shears. Gone. Nowhere to be found. I didn't leave that stuff outside. But the rake was fucking... God. 25 years old. You know. The wood's all... Old, you know. Old and cracked. It was probably a cheap rake to begin with. But I need it. And I used it, but it's missing. Two. And my shears. So we couldn't do the fence without the nail gun, right? Because there's no way that I'm going to put up almost 200 pickets with a hammer and nails when we had a nail gun, right? So, kind of, my grandma gave my stepdad a loan, and he went and got a nail gun in Texarkana for a good price, and that's just going to be taken off the labor, the money that it costs going to be taken off the labor that they have to do, which is okay, but yet, my, you know, my grandma had to pay up front, we had to pay up front, and um, I told, I, you know that I'm having an issue with the money. I say, that's why I said, give me all of the money. I will not blow it. I will go put it in the bank, and that will be the budget. And it's, everything sh it has to be done within the budget. No more money after it. And that's the best way to do it. And we could have avoided so many problems already. Because every time I come up here and, want, and need a check, I don't want to ask for the money. But every time the, the check needs to be wrote, it's like it takes me an hour to, to make them understand what it was for and then then it makes me feel about two inches tall and they also say some things to me that make me feel really small whether they know they're saying it or not um, I've told my grandma to watch what she says if she can to me because if I had the money and if I had another way to do it shit I wouldn't be up here asking them for it guarantee you that much man a fuck so, had a headache all day. I haven't eaten anything yet. It's pat way past seven. I just now finished working. I've been down there doing a lot. Doing a lot. Having to do some stuff I shouldn't have had to do because it was already paid for to be done and it didn't get done. But I have no money to pay anybody anything. So, it looks like on the sheetrock job, I get to torture myself. And um, the other thing was, my brother came by today. 
wanting money, wanting pills. And I, I myself have a prescription for pain medication that I could give you a laundry list of reasons that I should take them. But the thing is, I do not take them every day. I went from the time I was 13 until the time I was 25. Well, until the time I was, until February of 2010. From the time I was 13 until February of 2010. About 24, 25. I dealt with so much pain you wouldn't believe. I had gallstones the size of quarters, okay? And I had those ever since I was 13. And I've been hurting ever since I was 13. And I would tell everybody, you know, my back's killing me. Don't, don't make me do this. Don't, you know, please don't make me get up. And it's, don't, I'm hurting. And nobody believed me. No one believed me. So, I uh, just, my prescription of 90, I've taken maybe 15. I only have 28 left. What does that tell you? So, I took the prescription and I, of the bottle and I gave it to my grandma and I said, here. And I called my brother and I told him, I said, if you show up at this house again on this property I guarantee you I will put you in rehab for three months mandatory state ordered I will say whatever I have to say to get it done and trust me I can get it done and I told him I said show up again you're going to rehab three months do not call her for medicine do not call her for money and I also said if he wanted to fight me then, and I said, come on, bring it on, buddy. Bring it on. I'm ready. I said, I'll put you in the fucking hospital. I will take you down so hard that I don't care if I hurt, get hurt in the process. He would have been hurt, and I guarantee you he would have been hurt. And the next time, if I ever wake up and he's in my room, I have a bat that I created, that I made myself with my own hands in 11th grade in high school. And it's never been used, not even to hit a baseball with. And I guarantee you, I will take out his knee and give him something to say he hurts about. Because he doesn't hurt one bit. What the pain he's in, he could take a Tylenol and it would, you know, that's, that's all you can do. But I will give him a reason. I'll give you a reason to go to the hospital and to be hurting. It's enough for today, guys. Peace.